Kyle! <laughs> ah, screw it. He'll be back. Hey, folks, it's Tuesday night. Welcome to Murder Hobo, Inc. Between the Rolls, our stab at a talk show. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want cool stuff like this, uh, you can get it at our shop. If you want to chat with us on Discord, the link is down there. Uh, most importantly, if you want a seat on this talk show or one of our one shots, hit us up M Hobo Inc. either at Twitter or at Gmail. Yo, we already started. Where the hell have you been? <laughs> you know, uh, the show is about this. This is the money maker right here. <laughs> uh, and finally, uh, don't forget to visit our sponsors at Pirate Dog Dice uh, for our cool math rocks. And of course, oddfishgames.com, which I think Kyle's going to go ahead and expound on potentially here in a few minutes. Uh, we do appreciate your patronage. Uh, and again, thanks for watching us, folks. Tonight, we're going to be discussing monks after we do our recap. But first, let's go ahead and meet the crew. First up is David. David, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, I'm David. That'll be I'm a just little. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I'm usually a panelist here. You can find me on the Thursday episodes in, in Cacophony. I play a character named Sadar. And yeah, I hang out with these guys. So what's not to like? <laughs> <laughs> because it, it values your intelligence being the smartest one of the group what who says that <laughs> uh, somebody probably does <laughs> uh next up the thorn between two roses carol <laughs> carol tell us a little bit about yourself thorn? i'm the thorn what no i don't think so uh, hi, I'm Carol. I am a commissioned mini painter, longtime gamer, sometimes VM, um, and a campaign member of the campaign here. So, oh, the <laughs> campaign. She's like from fucking well, Ohio State air now. Air <laughs> the well, Ohio State. Wait, 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 wait. Is is cacophony a campaign now? We're not classifying it as that. Nope. The, Mar the Margu. <laughs> The Margu guys. Margu right? is yeah. now is now a campaign. Oh, is that okay? So Which one is Margu? Sunday. Sunday. Cacophony is more like a soap opera, according to the producer. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Frank, is is Margu now officially a full long running campaign? Because I knew you were breaking it up into bits. So. Oh wasn't... yeah. Yeah. No, they are on their uh, second. Uh, we'll call it adventure. They are. Well, we'll cover that in a little bit, Carol. Let's try to not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> fine are you done yeah oh there you go uh, <laughs> our other thorn kyle <laughs> and i thought that i was one of the roses yeah you aren't it's kind of oh. like david and i are the roses and you guys are thorns wow um, wow well. thorn too yeah, i'm I the know. only one that smells <laughs> <laughs> a rose nope oh man so you're going to tell us a little bit about yourself, Kyle? What do you like? Long walks in the park? Sunny beaches? What? Pina coladas? In the rain? Getting gone in the rain. <laughs> I'm not much into health food. Or singing. I am into champagne. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, you know what? I've been told I should sing tenor. Tenor 11 miles away. Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> I'll give you that one. That one was full. Kyle is elevated to Rose. Sorry, Carol. You're the only thorn. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc., where everybody flips me off. Uh, folks, uh, let's do a quick recap on the games before we get to the most majestic class of them all that I don't think anyone truly understands the monk. So we're going to start with David, who plays in the cacophony soap opera. These are the days of his life. David, uh, tell us a little bit about episode 125, The Golden Canard. Well, episode 125 kind of picks off in our uh, series about trying to find a cure to the, what, city councilman, elderman, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You do counts. play in that, right? <laughs> I think so. I just can never remember these positions that we come up with for these officials. It's Ottawa like, City Councilman at large. City Councilman at large. There we go. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, a cure for his malady has not been discovered. So we're in the Adventure Guild's uh, guild office talking to our favorite guild master from under these nuts, the, <laughs> the world renowned bard. Anyway, uh, we're in there in a meeting. There's a ruckus outside, outside the office. Someone busts in. It's a little bespectacled figure who now has headgear that he's wearing. <laughs> busts through, and it's Mortimer J. Sneed. He he's from the, Great the Academy, Academy, is he not? Yeah. No, on sabbatical. <laughs> <laughs> so he show, he bursts into the office, and he's just like, "I believe I, I've you know discovered the remedy or whatever it was for this malady <laughs> for the councilman." Anyway, yeah, it ended up being another time travel episode, folks. Come to find out, the the re- the remedy Great that we Scott. needed, <laughs> the sword lily, uh, had already bloomed. So we had to go back in time, Marty, uh, to um, three supposedly three months to pick it up when it was in full bloom, and yeah, you know, be back and be done with it. But now, of course, you know. I believe somebody sneezed. Somebody sneezed. Shit happens. <laughs> and we end up. We ended up. What was it? Like a hundred years in the past, or something like that. Yeah, I, I, I still am developing the timeline, but at least a hundred years previous. Yeah. So we ended up in the past again. Not as far back as we went last time, but we're still in the past. So, so anyway, uh, where we end up, uh, we look around and. Not much is there, but we looked in the distance and there was a town. It kind of like a western like town, uh, just out in nowhere. The walls of cacophony have not been built yet. There's head ro- hedgerows or whatever where where it was supposed to be. Uh, we make our way into town, uh, trying to find someone that can repair Mortimer's time travel device. And uh we stumble upon a sheep herder by the name of Goldie and she tries to figure out where the hell we're from. We give some long winded explanation. She decides to help us, takes us to the, the town blacksmith uh, to see about getting the device fixed. Chesty which is McSwoon. Chesty <laughs> McSwoon. So yeah. Oh yeah. I, I saw, I saw her in real life at a store the other day. Nice. So supposedly this gorgeous buff female blacksmith (laughs) (laughs) who Mortimer falls in love with right away. And uh, yeah, she decides to help us. We get informed. uh, We ask and inquire about the, the sword lilies. Uh, We get directed to the, the nobleman of the area. What was his name again, Frank? <laughs> uh, Alfred Lord Tennyson, or Lord Alfred Tennyson. Lord Alfred Tennyson, and his tower was will be Uma Thurman's tower. That's it. Yeah. See how this comes full circle. Anyway, uh, weaving. Weaving. These are the days no. of cacophony for uh, a series of one shots that are you know, just one shots. This Loosely is fairly. Connected. Uh, Loosely connected. This is fairly campaign like. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we got, you know, rotating guests that come in. So <laughs> we, we, will, we will return to sporadic one shots eventually. So, so anyway, uh Lord Alfred Tennyson <laughs> uh informs us that the sword lilies are supposed to be for a tribute to this visiting uh, I don't Viking. know, Viking <laughs> war party that they have to pay homage to or whatever. So it's all set aside for that. So we take it, you know, uh, to uh, try to acquire some of the, the sword lily. And in our efforts uh, to get this flower or whatever uh, from from the baskets with the tributes and all that, it ends up down where the docks will be uh, in cacophony. Anyway, uh, Viking ships, Vikings, they start raiding. 
and all that. We try to sneak our way in and yeah, do do not make a stealthy Caitlin assholes and elbows her way in. Yes. Caitlin played that night and she played Daphne and she rolled poorly. So but killed somebody in the first 30 seconds. So she still lives up her to her reputation. She always seems to roll poorly. My God. Well, she's <laughs> killing somebody. <laughs> you know, she rolled she rose well when nice. it's it's the first kill of the night. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, so we get discovered. We have one encounter uh with uh one of the Vikings from the ship. Captain yeah. Rabbit Dog. Rabbit Dog. Uh Daphne ends up like in full frontal with this guy. <laughs> Guys. Whoa. <laughs> it's like uh, so anyway, encounter ensues. Uh, we get a little help dispatching him <laughs> from Goldie and her little companion. And um, what was his name, Frank? Yanni. Yanni. Yanni, who, uh, yeah, had these star- stars or glaives that he would throw. And he was actually pretty good with it. So Ish. <laughs> ish. Yeah. I mean, he'd hit things sometimes. So he, did, he didn't hit any of the party, which you was, were trying, you were hoping he would. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. So, so anyway, after dispatching him, we still try to, we come up with the plan to sneak our way to the docks. We were going to uh, create a diversion. We were either going to take over one of the Viking ships or burn it. I think we went with burning it. But as we were making our way there, uh, we noticed that one of them is like their flagship. So, you know, it's a little more ornate and all that. So as we figured that would be a good place to start. So as we make our way up there to the gangplank, their captain comes out. Yeah, total badass. She really kicks the crap out of Sadar <laughs> and a couple of the others. Captain Tourette was a real son of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, my God. Captain, Captain Tourette. Tourette. Yeah. Oh, man. So, fight ensues. Um, yeah. I'll kind of annex break out the other Viking ship, loses Maureen, Goldie, and, <laughs> and her compatriot, or, you know, trying to get control of the ship, you know, actually just trying to get back to shore. Um we ended up uh, rounding out the fight by killing the captain and all that. But as that was happening, the Viking horde <laughs> starts coming running back. They're making their way into waters. We're like, oh shit, oh shit. And suddenly the other Viking ship makes it back to shore and just kind of careens into them, <laughs> smashing them between the boats. Anyway, we get our sword, Lily. We go back in time. And that's where we left off. We're back in cacophony. So we'll see where that. So where that how, do, how does the golden canard come in? You forgot the best yeah. part. Yeah. I was going to say, where's the golden canard? The name of the Viking ship that Goldie was controlling was named the golden canard. Nice. And her last name is Penny Lane. So if you follow the previous episodes, we investigated the house of Admiral Penny Lane. So, not knowing it was a female. Exactly. So there we go, folks. Full circle. <laughs> Easy peasy. Now we'll see if uh, Mortimer J. Sneed can make it work. Also, what he forgot to mention was he and Chesty McSwoon wah, wah, got it on because apparently oh Mortimer God. J. Sneed is a lusty horn dog. He's a lusty what? horn dog and apparently packing. So, you know. God. So. How does he get more action than my flipping high charisma? That man get, gets, oh, yeah. He gets ass like a toilet, toilet seat. seat. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, folks, that is in the archive. It was a fun little adventure. Uh, I know the Check producer hates time travel, but you know what? It's, it's kind of fun because now these guys have kind of seen how Cacophony came to be built. Hey, uh, I got a question. Did, did, uh, who was uh, Carrie was playing our usual character, right? Did did mm-hmm. she hit up? Did she hit him again this time? In the nuts with a yep. nat twenty. Yeah, he's wearing headgear <laughs> yeah. now, so you got to go for the nuts. <laughs> so <laughs> she was very proud of that. Uh, of course, he probably wasn't feeling any pain thanks to 
Chesty McSwoon. Oh, no, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that was a hundred years ago. He was probably he was probably already known by the time you hit him. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah, he didn't care anymore. Uh, that was our Thursday episode. Our Saturday episode, uh, both Kyle and Carol got to participate in, and I think it is best described as a shit show. It was, uh, it was awesome. Which which one of you wants to go first? I like Kyle go first if he wants to. Thorn Rose, it's up to you. <laughs> Kyle? He, he's, do, he's doing that thing where we take he's a picture. He's fucking of with you. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have it turned on to gallery. Because so he, he has to do the, the dumbass look when he actually freezes. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. He's actually trying to think of the episode. He's right. like, Did I play in that episode? Did I play in that episode? Okay, Kyle, what was the premise? Uh, the for the pre- um, that you went sent right us the door. into a city, uh, 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 an urban city, and we were level one. So everyone was like, "Well, oh. shit! I wish we were level three. We could make some more interesting characters." <laughs> like that wasn't brought up. <laughs> as, like it was, we had a, <laughs> as it you was, we had our turtle. We had Rania. We had the cleric. And we had Jub Jub, who made a deal with the devil and ate everything in sight. It was. And he weighed that much too. It was beautiful. Yeah, like six hundred pounds. I gotta do a shout out to Dylan and Ryan. They they just did an awesome. Really brought the episode together. Oh boy, did they! Yeah, yeah. Okay, Carol, fill in the gaps. So I guess because yeah, so. All right, so we were going into this town, basically. We had just started adventuring careers, and we were had traveled quite a distance, and we were tired and hungry, especially... And Jeff, hungry. Jeff, Jeff hungry. Was hungry. So hungry. Slightly um, hungry. I think he was... Start, he ate my shirt, I think, is what, what I did he eat ate. your shirt and a rope. <laughs> so we go into town. Uh, we get through the guards, and the guards pointed us to this uh, bakery. Known as oh, what those muffin top? No oh, fuck. Oh tools. <laughs> oh tools. Tools. Yeah. Oh, tools muffin top. Yeah. Yes, but had mu- yeah, I well, had muffins or something. You guys, you guys pay attention to me when I'm DMing, right? I do, but that doesn't sound sorry, like. Did you either. say something? <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh huh. And I'm going C now because I'm getting old. So you think I'm yeah? What I'm happens old. between Thursday night and Tuesday night? So. Or, or- saturday and tuesday so we go we end up um so we go there and we find out that there's been no deliveries there's no not a not an ounce of bread or cupcakes or anything there oh there was a couple stops along the way but you know watch the episode if you want to find out because those were those were fun they were short but they were fun stops Uh, along the way at job job eating her shirt Mm-hmm. Oh right, right, and no, the no. Uh, the artistic yep. opportunity by uh, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no. oh the artist, yeah, that's right. <laughs> the, the artist that does nudes. You know that was at the very beginning and the that very. Was funny. End. That was yeah, funny. it was. It uh, just goes to show that really it's all about the journey and not really the destination. Pretty much. <laughs> That's the entire episode. Did, did you guys fight anything? Oh yes, they, yeah, the, the yeah. final yeah. fight. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> did. Yeah, we, but most of the damage I think that was dealt, we kind of did to ourselves. Uh, really? Yeah, <laughs> you know, there was that whole thing of, of course, we needed to get down the hill. Yeah, uh, to go to to. We were basically we were given a clue. Um, go to the docks. Uh, find out, see if you can figure out what happened to the shipment, why there's no grain or any other foodstuffs to make foodstuffs being shipped in. Um, and this guy was brand new, so hence he didn't have a lot of extra stuff to make stuff with. So he'd opened like the day before and sold out. So we so our daring two friends, they basically they sat there and looked and looked at our turtle and we go well maybe we can slide down this hill to save some time yeah well it was okay it was either 
jump off this 80 foot cliff just walk and land on down the stairs and yeah. then, then, <laughs> or quickly slide down the hill and arrive exactly where we wanted to uh-huh I'm hearing Mario Kart in my Mario Kart, uh, Godzilla <laughs> movies, <laughs> camera. So I do remember, Jub Jub was on the back of the turtle. Rainy, I was on the front of the turtle, holding on to his like the shell around his neck. And I don't remember the oh, ya boy. Ya boy, boy was skiing. Skiing, <laughs> basically walking with a rope attached around Jub Jub down the hill. It was flipping amazing. Uh, it, you actually did a great job of turning it into like a chase. So we had different things. We came in obstacles, like a cow. The cow was hilarious. You the killed cow. a robotic dog. The cow the was the dog. boy with the magic beans. And it wasn't Roger. I, I remember I tried to swipe the beans in the way by and missed. And instead uh, knocked all the beans open and the cow ate a couple. And then being magic beans... Well, you know what the magic beans did. So likely we have a dead cow with a lot of greenery rapidly expanding. But we Up didn't... to the cloud giant kingdom where the city was destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So I remember, let's see. I, I remember. Been... Yeah, right. yeah, there you go. <laughs> There was also the two guards escorting a prisoner who lost <laughs> his legs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks to some wonderful steering on Jub Jub's part. <laughs> yeah, we had to to steer this fucking thing, to steer the turtle. You it guys was- gliding under the cow and Cal and Kyle trying to grab the udder as it was going. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got t- I got hit in the face by the flipping udders instead the of teat, <laughs> the teats hit her in the face. <laughs> I took damage from that though i took damage when i fell off of it so but so just beyond that point i remember i fell off and mr water skiing or road skiing your boy ended up going over He's the turtles he went over but he rolled like a nat 20 and made it look awesome he probably did a three-point landing he was a duke boy he was a duke boy he rolled I two nat 20s that the, night the, the ca- of course, by this point, we had caused enough trouble that the guards had taken notice that we were headed our way. So the turtle, I believe, took off. I may be forgetting how they exactly They ramped down. it. They, they ramped into the river. Me and your boy behind, which is fine, because then we two proceeded to try to get back on the plot train, because now it's so far off the rails. Who did you but meet in the alleyway? Good. Who was, was it? It's because I remember you two ended up going into the river. Oh, she forgot entirely about Batman, apparently. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell was... Uh... Yes, no, I ran into Batman. No, that was... Uh, that was You guys went into the river, but mm-hmm. meanwhile, we went and we found Batman. Yes, I... Batman. No, I did forget about Batman. My so parents like... are dead! <laughs> <laughs> so basically, this is kind of what told us to go to the dock. So... We basically, you, me and your boy basically snuck around uh, circumventing the all the guards. He, they were on the other bridge. There were two bridges across the main river. We went across one. They were on another. In order to hide our escape, he threw a fog cloud on there. <laughs> and across the bridge, I remember we got to another bakery, which had a bunch of goods in it, but they were stale because... But Jub Jub ate them anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did too. I ate the cupcake. I bought a cupcake. I actually paid. You eventually it. bought a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure it was worth really paying for, but whatever. Thief. You forgot the adventures of sausages and bologna that uh, Jub Jub and Womp so Crooch had. When he when he went to the uh, uh, God, what's that in the word? brothel. Yeah, what what's the name? Charcuterie. <laughs> yeah, charcuterie. Yeah, charcuterie. Yeah, but meanwhile, you guys. Well, this is this. This is that was meanwhile we were at the bakery. Jeez, you know. Let me. I gotta go walk forward on one story and then go back and catch the other up. Oliver so, and company. You guys were on the turtle in the river, and you managed to get out of the river. And yes, you with found, a nat twenty, I believe. Yes. 
I hauled up my fat self and <laughs> Womp Fruit's <laughs> heavy ass. Yes. <laughs> yes, and then you guys found you found the sausage, yes. the, the butcher. I you found the sausage book. king of the city. Yep, and the brothel. So, of course, Jub Jub was hungry because, of course, it's Jub Jub. So he went into the and got got the sausage. And he goes, he, well, actually, you didn't even pay for it. You just grabbed a bunch of hot dogs, you stuffed them down your pants, and you were eating like this while you were running away from the, I believe, from the butcher who wasn't too happy you'd stolen them from him. I should and- have called him Abe Froman, too. Yeah, Abe <laughs> Froman, the sausage, sausage king. king. Oh, my God. What was the turtle's name? It was a terrible, friggin' horrible name. Swamp was- Crooch. Swamp, Swamp, Swamp if Crooch. If he did not Long survive, oh. he was going to be Friar Crooch. <laughs> so Swamp Crooch went to the brothel, and he found out it was a bit too expensive for his tastes, for what he could afford. So no bueno there. Event- In spite they- of him being an aspiring model. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why don't you roll a really bad uh, uh, persuasion check there or something? I don't remember. I can't remember. I, I think he didn't have enough money. That's what it was. Yeah, that's all it was. It was so- a high-end strip joint. Yeah. So brothel was more than just a strip joint. You can get you can't get laid at a strip joint per se, but you can if you do it. Uh, sure, Carol, we'll go with that answer. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of them. The Brussels, that is their main purpose. Brad's gold club down in India. If you'd like to sponsor us, go ahead and let us know. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> all right, to try to cut this a little bit. They have a great shrimp bar. <laughs> I'm sure they do. They put on no. quite the spread. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now that Come on, Carol, cut this thing short. <laughs> well, I keep trying to, like, you know, just tell the main plot, but you guys keep interjecting all this other stuff that happened. So we get down to the docks anyway. I'm just, just going to cut to it. We get to the docks and we see three hooligans. Um, she, uh, who had just beat up uh, the guy who owned the warehouse that probably had all the foodstuffs in it. And he sent us back across the river. Where to, Batman was. Where Batman was. Oh, yeah. Batman. Was it literally the same place? Yes, it was right next door. <laughs> but, I didn't see, but we didn't see Batman again. We just saw more hooligans. But you he didn't see out, Batman. Batman saw you. I'm sure he did. <laughs> So we go back there. We had, I am we had the some, knight. I'm Batman. We had several other things. You know, <laughs> we had we had the oh, we had the creepy um, cultist who was hanging around by the school with the le- with the leaflets. Oh, the pie. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, the cult. They just came out and, and said, or- "Hey, we're a cult." <laughs> yeah, they were honest cultists. <laughs> Actually, that was that was funny too because you, of course, you had the, the house with the pie in the window, and the jump, jump stole, jump stole the pie while me and what was you no know, jump, jump could return all these things. He has no problem with that. Ew, <laughs> you ate it. I don't think they want it back. But the best part of that was was the fact that you. Ooh, you, you shoved the pie in your mouth. You took the evidence and wiped it on the cultist. She came out and beat the snot out of the cultist. Good. Um, and yeah, I don't remember the the, the, the belief. But I know had to do with sons of our daughters or something like that. Because I remember the comment about this is it would have been just easier to call them grandchildren or grandsons. Maybe. Not- Maybe you're missing a hidden meaning. <gasps> Oh, no, no. Dun, dun, oh, no. dun. <laughs> it's a one shot. I'm not going to look too deeply into hidden meetings and one shots. Unless... You know, someone would say that about cacophony too, but then you'd really be missing out. That's right. That cough, cacophony, though, is a. Is... Carol, we're not talking about cacophony. We got to stay no on track, service. man. Come on. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Cal, you can finish up. I don't oh. remember what happened at that point. <laughs> oh, what? Really? Huh? What? Oh, you can't? He doesn't really pay attention. It was a landslide oh. after yeah. that. I, I just appear. 
Lend my he, voice and leave. He comes <laughs> in, he shits, and he leaves. <laughs> an accurate description. He's more of an odd fish game kind of guy. Ah, oh, you're doing it more than he is. What the Tonight. hell? He again. hasn't mentioned it once. <laughs> what the hell? He, they... he's, he's waiting. Okay, so wrap it up. How how did it end? All right, so we found the place. Anyways, to just cut to it, we found the, we found the place. Um, I can't remember the name of the place either because I suck at names. But we found the we found the place. We found evidence that they indeed were the ones who. In fact, I think I'm the one that saw it. Uh, we saw the I saw grains of wheat in. We put obviously put two and two together. These were the thugs. They were the ones, you know, taking all the foodstuffs and part of this protection racket or whatever. And we basically uh, murdered them all. So and we took care wow. of that business. Well, they attacked us too, and they would have murdered us. So you I know would... that 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 is uh, evidence not currently present. I believe we killed allegedly them. allegedly. But we broke the back of this ring. Um, <laughs> the guy who actually owned the bar really didn't know what was. Edmund was Harpy. Right on... What? Edmund Harpy. It was Harpy's place. Yeah, right. It was Harpy's tavern. It was the whatever. It, came, it was a ton of fun. It was it was crazy. It was probably the most one of the most fun games, if not the most fun game I've had so far, on my entire run here. It was it was insane. It uh, uh, it was you make. A one shot out of cheers. Yes. Okay. I can do that. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I, ha I have written a scenario that happens only in a tavern. Ooh, okay. I have done that. <laughs> Play that. Yeah. So uh, cool. that, right, that one Carol, is. In... Get back on topic. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. That, that one is in the archive as well. Uh, I will not dispute uh, Carol's opinion of that. That was two hours of absolute what Murder Hobo Inc. was designed to do. I just love it. mayhem. Love it. Uh, the final game we're going to go ahead and discuss is episode 127, Play Drill. This happens to be the Margu campaigners. Uh, it is a family and close family member uh, all playing together on Sunday. Three generations of players. These guys have heard rumor of a lost city in the jungle discovered by gnomes and have opted to inspect that as one of their campaign options given. They made a rough sea crossing. Uh, it got rougher as they got closer because two members of the party went overboard and had to be saved. Uh, <laughs> one of them is the very robust uh, personality of Copious V. Bitters III, who hires every single bard he can to spout jingles for his product. They made it into play drill which happens to be a tabaxi nation <clears throat> and quickly discovered that uh, while there are some rectangular, spherical, and circular buildings, most of the capital city looks like cat trees uh, oh. and is populated by cat people, a.k.a. tabaxi. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we can't bring up tabaxi around Carol. She oh, her, shut up. You she still? gets her hackles raised anytime you mention tabaxi. <laughs> No, it's more like you get my hackles raised every time you mention I hate them, which is so untrue. She's, she's a, more of a dog person. <laughs> yeah, that's okay, Carol. That's okay. Uh, the, uh, the group ended up uh, hearing rumors of uh, where the gnomes were and where the gnomes weren't. Uh, they ended up checking on that. Uh, mayhem ensued as three of them went and attacked a problem child while another one actually got hit on by a tabaxi. Sorry, Carol. Uh, the charming rogue uh, seems to almost get as much ass as does Mortimer J. Sneed, not crossing over. Uh, after dealing with the archaeologist, they went to the standard uh, pawn shop slash adventurer's toolkit place. Uh, two of them ended up finding, uh, figuring out that maybe they would need something called catnip to maybe grease the wheels. Unfortunately, uh, they, they wanted to make sure that they were not viewed as cops, so they had to do some of the catnip, which adversely affect them because their roles were shit -ay. Uh, <laughs> so they ended up, uh, not quite stoned, more like Homer Simpson doing peyote. Uh, and then 
to make matters worse, uh, they came back out with the group separated in different sections of the pawn shop. The uh, roguish charmer uh, pointed out that he would like to touch everything. One of those items turned out to be, I'm not saying cursed, but a mask uh, that he opted to put on. Hilar uh Hilarity oh. will ensue when somebody not on uh, the cat drug uh, spots him, which has not happened yet. Those two were hustled out the back end, and as time ran out, the rest of the party skirted out the front door as the cops showed up, and uh, a brouhaha was averted. Everybody went around to see if they could locate their two companions. We will take that up probably this Sunday, uh, and maybe they will actually figure out where this lost temple is and maybe start to explore it. But it is deep within the jungle, and they aren't sure if they're going to take their zonkies, their, their hard-fought one zonkies, out uh, through that or go across the river. That being said, we are running late, so let's get to the... Uh, explicit monk, which all of us know and love. We've got a ton of information on it. Uh, let's start with David. David, uh, <clears throat> give me an overview. What the what the fuck is a monk good for? Nothing. <laughs> oh, that's my and Kyle if, impression. And if you ever seen the gamers movies and all that, the monk, I swear to God, <laughs> gets all the, the shit, but ends up kicking all the ass. So. <laughs> Okay, monks are um, they're they're a martial class. They're a melee class. They, <laughs> um, um, they're monks. Yeah, traditional uh, martial artists. They um, there are several different orders uh, that you can. They're not really orders. They're called ways or whatever that you can subclass into. And means. And means. <laughs> but uh, they're mostly uh, a dex and wisdom class. That those are their two main abilities you should focus on when building one. Um, with that, uh, they have uh, no armor proficiency, so their their AC is determined basically by their uh, wisdom and dex modifiers plus ten. So I mean, you know, you have good good modifiers, you can end up with a pretty high AC, um, and. Yeah, uh, one of the, the bread and butter uh, for that is uh, the ability Unarmored Defense, and basically that's what feeds into it. Um, the monks have abilities at different levels. Uh, these abilities are fueled by a spiritual currency called Ki, and uh, it, it works similarly to the sorcery points that a sorcerer has. A uh, certain amount of... <laughs> certain amounts of key are needed to fuel certain abilities and stuff like that plus also the level of the abilities too so when you first start you know it's pretty modest uh with, with the amount of key that you have and of course as your monk levels it just gets your monk gets more devastating so <laughs> i've played a monk i've played in a adventure league game uh tournament uh, for charity and played a tabaxi monk named foot and hey carol's here don't say that yeah <laughs> will you guys just stop all right <laughs> well, I, 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 I'll, I'll, it's a it's a great class i'm a rap, I'm a rap person okay so, i like rap that's yeah. why she thinks cats are the lesser race. So that's why I got that. So that gets us into the monk. So uh, wherever we want to go from there, Carol, Kyle, Frank. Carol, here, you're up. Frank what? doesn't know this shit. I don't read that crap. <laughs> no, Frank, did you have monks back in your day or no? Actually, uh, real quick. Uh, but, sorry to interrupt, Carol. Honestly. Uh, first and second edition monks were a uh, giant pain in the ass. Uh, had it not been for Dragon Magazine clarifying them and the bards, I don't think anybody ever would have played either one of those two classes as yeah. written because they were just a giant clusterfuck. Um, so yeah, we did have monks. Nobody played those fuckers. Wasn't he made up of cleric and fighter or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, it was, it was a really it, crappy it a subclass. Uh, so was the Bard. I, it, it, for all its flaws that I bitch about, 5e 
has done a nice job on monks and bards. Carol, uh, tell us uh, your opinion, your viewpoint on a monk. I, I to tell you the truth, this is not one I've played yet. So oh. Oh. Well, Carol, you play a lot of Pathfinder. Have you ever played a monk as a Pathfinder? No. Actually, no, I have not. Do they suck in Pathfinder 2 until they fix the class? I don't know. I Actually, because I recall, I'm trying to think back to all the play I've played with a lot of players. I don't think I've really played with anybody who actually has played a monk, and which is really strange, because I've played with pretty much people played with every, every other class, but I can't think of a, who played a monk. Um, I'm trying to think of my husband. Now, my husband did have a 5e monk for a very short time, and I'll get into that and the reasons why he picked that class at the time he did. But he ended up going back to his original character because his original character died and we brought him back a few sessions later. So he decided he wanted to go back to him. Um, but yeah, I, I was going to say my biggest exposure to the monk though really is watching Critical Role and watching uh, the one there. Marisha Ray played yeah. as Beauregard. 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 Um, but that's Nerd. Not what did you call me a nerd? No, I'm calling me a nerd because I yeah. knew. <laughs> oh, we got... watched the show. I love I love the show. Um, but yeah, yeah it's like been my one real experience. <laughs> and obviously, it's it's a very it can it can be a very very effective class um, with the amount of monk shit she can do. So I mean, she misty step. Uh, with and I said I believe that version of the monk is the one that's in Wildmont. I think he wrote. I think they built that one special for that particular book. So I don't have that book. I want to at some point I'll get I it. Do but. not have any monks in the Wild Mountain. Really? Book. I thought that was. I thought they that, mentioned they mentioned the Cobalt Soul Library, but they don't mention. Yeah, I thought you have to buy the Green yeah. Ronin. Um, um, <clears throat> Uh, Alexand Alexandria, Alexandria, Aldori campaign setting. Yeah. Yep. That's what yep. I'm thinking. Right. That's. Oh cool. yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. I think it's in there, and I think it is a different. It's a different archetype of monk. But, but as I said I can see that they're, they're very effective. It's. It's that once again, I like to try different uh, classes and such, and Stop. I would like to try it at some point. Or tabaxis. Hey, maybe I I'll play a tabaxi. So fuck you. <laughs> Watch. Go get Carol's one. bringing the heat. <laughs> so I'm the a queen of monk. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go get one of my. We have four pet rats here, so I will go get one of them. Those are good eating. Squeeze lemon, salt, pepper. Mm, no. mm, mm. You know, you could always have Tabaxi NPCs, Carol, and be the crazy cat lady. Yeah. I should tell the dude actually. Best Tabaxi I ever saw played was uh, one of our players, Jesse. He'd always walk into the tavern and order a drink, knock nope. it off. I <laughs> will have another one. <laughs> no, he'd order anything because he knew he was going to knock it off. For the first time he did it, I about lost it. I would like another one, sir. I'm cutting you off for my friends. <laughs> okay. <Fuck>. Whack. <laughs> so we'll me twice. So, yeah. Uh, Kyle, your thoughts on the monk? Uh, yeah, no, uh, as the point I was trying to get across earlier and during everyone's uh, conversation, it's just how screwy the monk has been in history past. It didn't really become more official until 3 and 3.5, and you can see in Pathfinder today why still no one likes the class, because it's mad, I believe is the term, right? Multi-attribute well, dependent. Well have to play one in not until you get the unchained monk no i know you know i do know people who actually played that but i mean or i knew you said not at my tables i mean that i come across a lot of players conventions and such sure. we'll talk about 4e no one actually liked that and so we have the 5e monk and we have the monk perfected just they, like many classes <laughs> love a 4e Four e Pathfinder that. was four e. What? No, Pathfinder's. No, nah, it's the same difference. Same difference. Three point five, whatever. <laughs> no, uh, the monks. You know, uh, you don't see a lot of people playing them because everyone has this idea that 
uh, um, everything D and D must take place in medieval Europe, and that their monks weren't in medieval Europe. Lies! They were. You can read about them. Mm-hmm. It, Vikings have raided block, their bitch. place all the time. Wait, wait, wait. Exactly. <laughs> monks in medieval Europe. They're just not the martial artist types. You figure that they're. Oh, no, the martial artists, too. But I don't see why you couldn't. I mean, like a drunken master. You know what? I, I think monks were built around, around, I'm not shitting you, the TV show Kung Fu with David Carradine. I swear oh, to God, God. That, that's probably oh. what they did. Or David like, Carradine. Oh, no, no. Too soon. (laughs) Too soon. (laughs) You're terrible. Bubba Wallace, (laughs) why? Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, uh, but then we have the monks as we know today. And honestly, uh, I didn't give them much thought, and I never did because they didn't really seem that interesting to me. I'm not into anime or anything like that. Uh, But then. we discussed that Frank can't read Xanathar's Guide to Everything. It's true. And you know what I kind of realized that this book is? This is the, oh my God, we didn't tell them how to role play these characters. This is how we're going to do it. I mean, just opening it up to the monk page. Oh my gosh, look at that. I'm amazing. I didn't have a bookmark. It wasn't an odd fish that was in there holding my pace for me. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, just as you're reading it, you know, um, they give you the ideas on how you're supposed to play them. You know, mm-hmm. where did your monk come? What kind of monastery? And obviously you can have them growing on the streets, getting that education there. Uh, uh, your monastic icons, um, you know, do you fight monkey style, ox style, praying mantis, Eagle. dungeons and dragons, so- eagles? Eagle style, man. Uh, and then you get to be like Dragon Hydra and uh, immediately thinking upon that. Um, I lost my train of thought. Shit. Shit. Okay. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say is much like the other martial classes, the monk is something where you have to continue to role play in combat as well. You know, you're not, I roll a dice, I hit for this much. I mean, some people can be, but the better enjoyment comes from being, oh yeah, I use my eagle style and I rake my fingers right across his face for 75,000 damage. (laughs) I stun him by using my eagle claw to kick him in the testicles. Stunning strike. Yeah. Uh, And then just continuing on from there, I mean, the way of the elements monk is arguably the worst monks there are and but if you start thinking, hell, you know what? I'm going to make my dragon style monk a uh, way of the elements monk. That way I can also happen to shoot fire. Uh, out and of your as ass. I, <laughs> out of my ass. That's right. I want to fly everywhere. I saw Kung Fu Panda. That's how Poe does it. Yep. <laughs> dragon warrior, guys. Yeah. I'm tired. He's a warrior. I don't know what I'm saying at this point in time. That's fair. Well, Let me ask you guys this, uh, since I don't read that shit. Anyway, <laughs> don't. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure they've gotten rid of it, but in the first, second edition, in order to get to the higher levels, there was a, a class restriction where there were only so many openings per year. And in order for me, if I were a high-level monk, to advance, I had to take on the current holder of that title and kill him, which to me seems counterproductive because it's like, uh, this guy might be really good and maybe teamed up. We could be something special. But if I want to be master of autumn, uh, I got to kill the other master of autumn. So it was kind of dog eat dog world. Correct me if I'm wrong. That has been eliminated from the level. Yes. Uh, Sir, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> it's been it completely. Now you can achieve immortality by just sitting and drinking the dew of life. Oh Pretty much. God. That's the drunken master? <laughs> no, that's monk. You All get to diamond them. soul or body or whatever. Yeah. All right, my, now my favorite section. Uh, <laughs> single monk or group of monks. What kind of adventure if any, 
Uh, we'll go in reverse order. We'll start with Kyle because he always oh, loves God answering the question I didn't first. Think about it. I didn't think about it. Oh, uh, come on, Kyle. Uh, obviously. There's a non-script that you, you know. My dear. Are you expecting me to read you right now? Expect me to read. Look from back here; it doesn't even look like my eyes are open. <laughs> All right, there we go. Anyway, leading the script. Uh, if you have any thoughts on it, I, I mean, none I of us here, except for David, it. has played a monk, so <laughs> they're uh, the bastard child of the adventure class. All right, uh, going for a high-level monk adventure. Let's say there is a temple that uh, 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 has the way of the four elements, and it is actually at the cross section of all of the planes. So it keeps in balance fire, air, water, earth, and all of that. Uh, and the planes decide that they do not care for that, or perhaps one of them cares a little bit more than the other. And so the <laughs> monastery is being attacked, overrun, so that the invading planers uh, have a foothold into conquering another plane and aren't going to be stopped by anyone. And as your monk group uh, um, is there to attempt to keep the balance. I like that. That's sure. Good. Let's avatar it, you know? It's true. I know. Uh, Carol, what do you think? Single? Uh, party? Either or? Neither? How about both? You know what? I'll do both because I think this would work for either. Um, I would, it, it just depends on what, like everything else I say, it all depends the level and stuff. It all depends. It, it can be any level. It can be any amount. It level just, one, Carol, go monks. <laughs> same thing. You can ba basically, it just depends on what monsters you populate and how many monsters you populate your dungeon with. I'm thinking about sending my party or my solitary monk into this grand old uh, ruins of a library where there is an ancient scroll that is locked away there that you have to retrieve. And it, there are also, there are all sorts of interesting denizens because these are, of course, this is going to be ruins of one. Um, and that basically you all, uh, either you or your party, or you're all monks at the same monastery. And this monastery has a big library and looking for uh, scrolls and other you know information that's that's a big thing for them you know to get all the information in the world kind of like the pathfinder society oh. um there is like too much again. pathfinder stuff in this conversation cut it out carol <laughs> we're a D, &D show <laughs> pushes their buttons so i you know they like to push mine. I like to push back. I'm going to mute her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Harry will kick your butt anyways. All right. So, but yeah, that's what I would do. I would so just have, have like a scroll uh, that they want to acquire for the library. So kind of like the start to Red Sonia, only it's a scroll? I don't know Red Sonia, so. What? I that was I'm the not... only thing Bridget Nielsen was good in. Nope, I haven't watched it. You gotta watch it. <laughs> Red Sonia. Watched, okay. It even had Schwarzenegger in it. Yes, I know. I don't my I think my husband watched it. He said he didn't really particularly like it. So it wasn't we great, never... but yeah. yeah, he didn't like it. All right, David, what do you think? Single uh, group, neither either. Well, what a, the concept I have in mind could even be group or either or one person versus the group. Um, basically have it to where your order is known because they have it here in the, the different ways, the different orders, uh, is known for producing assassins and special uh, assignments and stuff like that. Get contracted out by nobility and all that. You're part of a team of assassins. You get contracted out. Uh, for this particular mission, you leave the monastery with like five other monks uh, to carry out this mission. Turns out you're the target of the assassination. The other monks turn against you. Oh, you're bring fucked. your character, <laughs> bring your character down to zero, and it's up to you if you want to go back and exact <laughs> and exact revenge. So. Okay. I would I cool. would go uh, and I'm just gonna say it outright. Big trouble in Little China. 
Yes. Fuck it, man. <laughs> that is the greatest monk show ever. Oh yeah. Uh, because uh, all three of those badasses, uh, just and and Kurt Russell owns that movie. Fucking exactly. owns that movie. Uh, because it's all in the wrist. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the character David Lopin was awesome. Yeah. That that, that that was a perfect villain. Yeah, so. and and he is in everything. Uh, but yeah, I I I hesitated at doing this show just because I knew that we had very little experience with monks. David was kind enough to point out he had done one in Adventures League, which does help. Uh I did not touch them then. I won't touch them now. I think I would only use them as evil NPCs, <laughs> uh, like David said, assassins. So, ooh, go with the hey. uh, way of the long death monk from Vampire Sword monks. Coast Vampire Monk. Is it a vampire monk? Pretty much. <laughs> no, no. I always just think of it as yeah, their that's necrotic your abilities, actual... and you use it to fill <laughs> temporary hit points. So it, I have it, actually hey. played that monk, and I've enjoyed that monk. You play that as a half orc. You die. You come back, and then every single time you die after that, you just use a key point, and yep. you never die. You never die. Wow. Oh, that is friggin'. That's powerful. I mean, they have some really powerful abilities. I said. Do. Now, all right, so we didn't get, I thought we were going to do the different, basically, different archetypes or different paths. Well, someone was talking about that so <laughs> a little long, <laughs> David. Time, so, you know, they, they can get interrupted 500,000 times. And then we were talking about someone's hatred of cats, Frank. Yeah, like obsessed with me or something. I, I don't know. Wow. wow. Here I am. Whoa. Wow. I, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 this has been the Carol show. It's Carol. Let's Carol. Let's Carol. Carol's my Gonna next us about bad guy. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Tell bad so, jokes and talk about. Oh, go ahead. Shut up, Carol. <laughs> no. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, I was going to say is that I referred to it earlier. Oh, my. my I I, we, I thought we were going to talk so talk about the archetype of different types, and the one I picked was the one that my husband had played, which I was going to say is the best character you ever want to bring to Ravenloft or any sort of undead setting where radiant damage will be your friend, and that's the Sun Soul Monk. Where it's also range, so you can sit back there. Are you can cast bolts of radiant energy. Are you can. Are you can. Okay. Maybe it won't so work against something like Asimars, mm. but it will definitely work. Figure against out a way to do <laughs> Mortal Kombat with nice. the party. That would be awesome. Tournament style. Enter the oh. arena. Is See, it that- like Jax? Is Jax the guy who has the metal arms? Mm-hmm. He is going to be your astral. That's the one monk. that I wanted to to discuss. Was astral monk. talk about it? You know, let's go over tonight, guys. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh my god, it's just like that. That is an incredible UA, and I hope it becomes canon because it's amazing. If so any we'll of you that. play Borderlands Three, basically you're Amara. You've got these spectral arms that just protrude out the side of you. But that's only part of it. As you level, you build this <laughs> astral armor. The next step is this head. No. Until you become Sasuke from Naruto. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh no! <laughs> it, 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 it sounds like an awesome class. By the way, I was surprised that nobody here picked like a tournament as for for your idea we just did yeah (laughs) gosh carol it's not about you listen to what the other people are saying (laughs) no i'm talking about the uh, i'm talking about when we went through and came up with a scenario i don't think any of us came up with an actual tournament so you had the assassin thing which is why i was like wow nobody picked like a tournament where everybody where you do yeah you can have like it could all just be pvp and the winner Uh, i i actually did uh, the crucible uh, and that was slated to be one of our first 10 shows, and I never ran it. Maybe we ought to run it. The PvP months. is a hard thing to do. Ky- Kyle is. has a better idea than I did, so I think if we're going to run it, I think it's going to be Kyle's baby on that <laughs> one. His, his idea was much better fleshed out than mine. I'm not, it's not my idea. It's the st- <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> not it! What? Okay. 
So. Get it in. All right, we got a we got a little bit about archetypes in. Yeah, we got yeah. a little bit. We talked about the long death. You talked about the astral self. You talked about the sun soul. If you want to be Street Fighter, uh, you didn't talk about the Kenzai. If you so always nice. loved weapons, and the other answer to the tank slash uh, ranged expert of the monk. What else did we have? Open hand. If you want to be the, the pugilist monk. and you don't want to be a monk, you want to be the British boxer with the friendly mutton chops. <laughs> hey, that way of the open hand is for you. Uh, is that you Jackie play? Chan? That's, Jackie That's what I played was open hand. So. Ah, and then you got the way of the drunken monk who is your drunken most master. monks are what? Most monks are Wasn't one target. Was it, wasn't Scott a drunken monk in one of the episodes? He was. He, he was in my first I, episode. Yeah. Was that the seagoing one where he was running or was that Ericall again? No, that was Ericall. Uh Basically, it was my first episode. I was the druid, Erwin. Uh, we had the tabaxi. He kept, kept pissing on Scott's robes. <laughs> that was the monk. <laughs> You don't remember it? Oh, it's in that the archives, folks. Ago. You're gonna have Man, to. There, there's 130 some <laughs> shows. I, I I have a hard episode time. 72, 71, somewhere around there. You'll you'll find it. Yeah, so. this would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was- with all my free time, I am aware. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, he's the one that keeps bringing it up. Well, one of the the other ways that uh, it's a UA right now that's kind of fits in the european section is the um the the way of mercy where basically you're almost like a plague doctor you know like a kung fu plague doctor so you know too many archetypes it's it's very gothic in nature and so it's good (laughs) it's it's the first healing moment let's be fair they they are starting to define what they want their archetypes to be you got your arcane Mm -hmm. you know your eldritch knight your uh way of the four elements you have your uh pacifist the oath of mercy the oath of redemption they're just starting to fill that off now. Your evil one, your long death, your oath breaker, your yeah. Somebody somebody yeah. mentioned being a pacifist on Twitter, and no, okay, <laughs> just fucking. Whoa. You know what? Whoa. I, I want to be an accountant and I want to play Monopoly. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're a capitalist. Play the fucking game right. Uh, oh man, pacifist. I don't want to kill anybody. Out of my table. <laughs> Get off hey, my hey, table. Hey, hey, hey. Hero hey, ran a great game with a pacifist. Did I play in that one? No. <laughs> ah, see. <laughs> what else does a player believe that you can you can minimalize an actual that you can knock people out, sure. I, I, I don't mind Did that, up but or a, out? <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, a pure pacifist though. I don't want to kill anybody. Uh kill or be <laughs> killed. Hey, that was Jody, Oath of Redemption. I was he never say. hurt a fly. Yeah. He caressed the shit out of that fly, though. That fly never felt more loved. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's one of my favorite characters you've done, Kyle. That's awesome. <laughs> Kyle, you have so cool. no characters that are my favorite at all. I hate every single <laughs> one of those fuckers. All right. I'll bring a menagerie of those guys back next time I play for you, Frank. Nice. Uh, folks, with that being said, let's go to final thoughts. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Start with Carol. Carol, final thought. Uh, well, monks are definitely, well said, I want to try just about everything at some point. So monks are obviously on my list. Rainy of the monk. Yeah. What? Rainy of the monk. Rainy Don't try was, anything. Rainy is pro. Twice. Never, never, ever, ever be a monk. Wrong mindset. Maybe a drunken monk. That would be the one that would work. Drunken for master. Yeah. Drunken but nah, she's a rogue. <laughs> there you go. Kyle, final <laughs> thought. <laughs> it's been on my mind lately that I think I'm forgetting something and I just don't know what. <laughs> and that is But odd, if I remember Kyle. it later, I will let you know. Uh David, let's let's not play games. What are your final thoughts? My final That's thoughts are monks, 
play them. I mean, you know, it is a very, very underrated class. It's a lot of fun. I mean, especially if you role play it out, it's great. You got so many subclasses now. It's you could really have a lot of fun with it. So, and oh, was that an odd fish game? That was that was a very strange thing he was holding. You know, it was very odd. It was a fish. Oh shit! I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Dirty dog dice. Uh, they are, are one of our sponsors tonight. Uh, uh, they will make you dog turd dice proof that you can polish a turd. If you pirate think you roll dog. like shit, pirate dog dice, dice will, will get you it. some shit dice. We're we're gonna have poo emoji dice soon. <laughs> I agree. I, I'm I'm pushing for it. Uh, folks, that being said, this has been our talk show between the roles. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive, episode seventy one or seventy two. If you want to buy our cool stuff like a mask, you can buy a mask. That is cool. You know, we have you, masks. We, we have, have masks. masks. Do we have the mimic mask yet? No. I'm not that Aww. good. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to you have to go to a competitor, and by all means, uh, if you find something in a competitor shop, buy it because uh, they probably need the money. That's right. Uh, at, we've got a Discord channel. You can chat with us, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, most importantly, if you want a seat on the table or on the panel for the talk show, let us know. Uh, Thursday, we are probably doing cacophony uh, as the world turns in cacophony. And then <laughs> on Saturday, we are back to our first and regular campaigners as they die in yacht. I'm sorry, investigate what? themselves in yaddle. Uh, there's probably a very specific scent for Yaddle, if I had to make a guess. For all that you're at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. We will see you on Thursday. Be safe. If you can't social distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, and cover your mouth when you cough, you freaking pigs. Uh, everybody wave goodbye. Bye, Push over everybody. old people. Push over the old people. They're, they need to die. Oh. Anyway.